This is Arm from Predator Cycling, and today we're going to show you how to use our DIY carbon repair kit to go ahead and fix this frame right here. As you can see, we're missing part of the frame. Um, we use this frame here to do a lot of our, our test repairs on so that we can test out new methods. So we're going to use this frame today to explain it. Um, the first thing you need to do is to know if your carbon frame is cracked or not. We have a video that's actually dedicated to that. If you click right down here, you can go to that video and watch that in an entirety. Um, we're going to do the abridged version here. You can see that there's a parallel, uh, a line parallel to the frame, to the tube itself. We have another one coming perpendicular off of it. We know it's a crack. We do a fuel test, and again, we get failure. There's a little bit of deflection in there. And then if we're still not sure if there's a crack or not, we can do a coin test. And we basically are listening to the sound. And when it changes sound, that sound, that pitch changes, we know there's a crack. This is, we're gonna start the coin test where the carbon's still good. This to this, that tells us there's a crack. So we, we know for sure that this bike is cracked. We're gonna go ahead and start the repair on this. And how we're gonna do that is by first masking off either side of the repair area with electrical tape. And then we're gonna use saran wrap to wrap the rest of the frame to protect it, to make sure nothing happens. We're now gonna go ahead and start wrapping up the frame here to start the repair process. As said in the instructions, we're going to be using some of our recommended materials. We're going to be using electrical tape here. We're also going to be using some plastic wrap. We're going to use this to protect the other parts of the frame not right next to the repair. So you're going to start by coming off just slightly past where the, the crack looks to be ending. So it looks like it's going to end right about here. We're going to go just past it over here. You want to go about an inch, inch and a half past the repair area. The reason we're doing electrical tape here, we're building a barrier to stop the epoxy if it happens to go past. The next thing I like to do is I like to move the bike into the repair area. So the clamp is on the repair area. That way it gives me space to do the new, to, to wrap on either side of it. We're now taking some of our plastic wrap and wrapping it around on top of the electrical tape. And we're just gonna wrap this frame off here real quick. Now that the bike is all wrapped in plastic, we go back in and over that overlap here, we just put another little layer of tape to make sure we've sealed off the epoxy from any possibility of it coming through. This is just to be safe. Rather be safe than sorry. You're now ready to start sanding. The point of sanding is to remove the clear coat, the paint finish, and get down to the carbon. We're also trying to remove those broken fragments of carbon that are coming out from the repair area. We're going to start this with 120 sandpaper. Now that's the roughest sandpaper you feel. You're going to use that to get down to the base carbon, and then we'll use the 220 to get out that fine detail. And then we'll make sure to come back and do it with some 120 to make sure we have a good bonding area. What we supplied you with here is a wet dry 120 sandpaper. What that means is, is that you can do it wet. And we're going to use, in this case, just a spray bottle. This is all water. And just spray down the repair area. And then we're going to go ahead and take the sandpaper and sand that down. And then we're gonna go ahead and start sanding. As you'll see, you're gonna start getting, it'll start becoming dry. And when that happens, we just add a little bit more water. When you're sanding down here, you wanna make sure that you're sanding until you get black. As you can see here, we sand. 
and you can see that that's all black in there it's not white that means we got to the carbon and you also want to make sure that you don't have any like popping out from the clear so like you can see up in here a little bit there's a little bit of like dimples and stuff that stuff you want to get that all out you want a nice smooth surface as we started sanding down the repair here we saw that the actual crack is going to where the rivet is the rivet nut is so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go ahead and drill this out and we're gonna fit fill finish over the, the rivet and then come back in and redrill this um, this isn't really something you typically encounter this is just because of the awkward location of this particular crack so we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and do that real quick and come back to finish sanding now that we've finished here sanding this off you can see that we've gone through some of that top aesthetic layer and we can see that unidirectional carbon underneath um, we've sanded all of the damaged material off you can see some of the the, the final little lines of top layer that have been removed and it's all nice and smooth you can kind of run your finger across it and there's no sharp edges there's nothing it's all good so we've made sure now that we went over this the last pass with a 120 so that it's a it's a good bonding area so now we're going to go ahead down and wipe down this whole area with just a clean rag and we're going to next um, use our acetone sanitizing wipes to wipe down the area to make sure we're nice and clean so we can start process the, the carbon repair process. Now that we've gone ahead and sanded down the entire repair area, we can see that there's a small crack still running perpendicular. We can see the crack line where it goes. We can also see that that top parallel line has actually been completely removed. The entire surface is real nice and smooth, so we'll have a nice bonding area. We're gonna go ahead now and just wipe down this area so we have it all nice and clean. And then we're going to go ahead and use our acetone wipes to wipe it down. First, I'm just getting anything that's left over off, any fragments of uh, sandpaper or the rags. Make sure everything looks good, which it does. We're now going to go ahead and take our alcohol sanitizing wipe. This is going to make sure that it's nice and sterile surface. You can see how much dirt that actually pulled off of the repair area. So now that we have our surface nicely clean, we can go ahead and cut our carbon here. We're going to basically cut a shape that fits just over the repair area and a little bit over it. So the concept is, is to get the carbon to go in the same orientation as the crack and we're going to get the, the right size there and then we're going to put another piece that goes over it to cover the actual repair area and the entire part right here and we're going to use this and we're going to go ahead and lay it on the part and make sure it's the right size so we can see that the part the carbon's a little bit too big to go over just the repair area okay so we're going to go ahead and trim that a little bit so now that'll just work just perfect get over the repair area and i'll cover both the cracked areas now we're gonna go take another piece and make it go over this by about half an inch to about an inch and go over the entire repair area. And that looks about good. Clean up the end just a little bit and we're good to go. One of the things you wanna make sure is when you put the first layer, you're covering just that repair area. And you'll have basically a little bump that comes up. And this second piece that's coming on here in this case is gonna be larger. And that basically makes a taper. So it basically will come up slightly and then go up a little bit more to the top. Now note, we've also removed quite a bit of the carbon. We've removed a lot of the top layer of carbon here, as well as all the clear coat. So once we get this compressed and finished, we should have a pretty smooth surface. So we're now gonna go ahead and saturate our bottom lay with epoxy and as well as our top lay and get ready to start compressing. Now that your surface is prepped and ready for epoxy, we're gonna go ahead and mix our epoxy. We have our epoxy and we have our hardener. These come, with, these come to you already with the correct ratio. So you can either mix the entire bottle or you can go ahead and check your manual and get the correct volume or mass ratio for epoxy and hardener. I've already taken the liberty of mixing up myself some epoxy. Before you start handling the epoxy, you wanna make sure you put your gloves on. So, 
we got our epoxy here, and the thing you want to note is to make sure that it's mixed really well. You want it to be that same consistent color, and you want to make sure that you don't really have any air bubbles. Once you've got that nicely mixed for about a minute, we're going to go ahead and scrape some of the sides off. So now we're going to go ahead and apply some epoxy onto the repair area. Note that it's getting just turning a little glossy, and that's what we want. And that should be enough to get over the entire repair. We don't want too much on here. The reason we're doing this is so that we can get a nice tacky layer. So when we apply the carbon on here for the first time, it stays in place. We also want to make sure that we have appropriate saturation of our part. So I like to put a nice layer of epoxy on the bottom here. So when you press apply compression, it pushes the epoxy through the laminate and into the final top surface. So you make sure that everything got nicely coated. Now that we have our pieces cut, we're going to go ahead and saturate these with our epoxy and get them ready to prep onto the frame. So what we're trying to do here is make sure that we get a nice even coat of epoxy across the whole piece. And I kind of use like a dabbing approach that makes sure I push it through and that I don't really ruin the weed. Now, before you start laying this on the panel, on the repair, we're gonna actually go ahead and take our compression tape here and get that ready so that we're uh, ready to lay this down. So here's our compression tape. We're just gonna go ahead and unwrap this. You wanna notice that you see the way it's bending the tape? You wanna use the side that's facing up so the part that's not curling. That's the part that has release on this. So it's already pre prepared with release, so it pops right off the repair when it's all done. We're gonna go ahead now and just start applying our, our laminates. Now we've allowed in this intermediate here where we've gotten the repairs, the, this piece prepped and the other piece prepped, that gave us some time to allow the epoxy to harden just a little bit. That makes it a little more tacky. It makes the laying process real easy. Now don't worry too much about the aesthetics of this first one because you're not really gonna see it. You just wanna make sure it's nice and flat and it's on the area that's repaired. Now, because this repair wasn't too deep, this isn't a very involved repair. Now we're just gonna come over the top and do that final round. You want it nice and flat right on there. Now note, when you put the compression tape on, you'll actually flatten this out even more and make sure you have no bubbles. So we're gonna go ahead here start applying our compression tape. And you can see here as I'm going slightly past the repair, and then I'm going to go ahead and use a clamp here to hold this down. Just make sure you know you check all the sides and make sure there's no problems anywhere. There we go. It looks all good. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get the heat gun out and heat it up so that we can get the shrink wrap to actually start shrinking and uh, go from there. I use this on low because I don't really need to get it that hot. Um, you can also just use like a nice hair dryer if you get it um, going pretty good and you can see it's already starting to react. Now, this will actually help accelerate the dry time of the epoxy, but we still want to give it a full 24 hours of dry time. And you can see the compression tape actually even took the curve, that bottom curve of the, the tube. It's pretty impressive. This is why one of the, the strengths of this kit is that we give you all of the stop of the line materials. So this is, this is the same shrink tape. If we ever use it, um, this is what we use. Okay, you're uh, now ready to uh, let the bike dry. 
Now, a couple things to note about the drying of the epoxy here. You want to keep it between, you know, 75 and 85 degrees. It can get a little bit cooler than that, but the more, the, the hotter it is, the better it dries. Don't let it dry anything over 150 degrees. In our case here, we have a small drying area we set up in the shop where we have some heat and it's a closed off area. So we get it between about 85 and maybe 95 degrees. And that gives us a really good finish on every one of our repairs. So we're gonna go ahead now and put this in the drying area and tomorrow we'll uh, start sanding it and prepping it so we get it ready for finish. Now that we have the repair done, we're putting this into our, our drying area here. In our particular case, we have a closed off room and this is all temperature controlled so we have a nice steady heat and we can make sure that we get proper drying of all of our epoxies. At home, you could maybe use a small space heater and place that in front of the frame and put like a, a space blanket or something behind it so that we can you can get nice heat even across both sides. Um, you can also put it inside the house instead of putting it in the garage or something because at night, the temperature drops quite a bit. So you want to make sure that you have a nice warm area where the bike's going to stay so you get good drying on the epoxy. And remember, you want this to dry for a full 24 hours. Thanks for watching guys, and if you liked the video, click on subscribe here so you can get all of our latest videos. If you missed our previous video, it was the DIY Carpenter Care Part 1, and up next is Part 3. Thanks for watching guys.